On the 27th of April, our government is going to deport a 10-year-old boy who is perfectly normal in every way. He can read and ride a bike, but he has autism. I went to after-school care with this boy, and he can't speak, but he can use sign language to communicate with us. If he can get along with us, and we can get along with him, why does he have to leave? So might have to explain this for uh, a general... I know you know a little bit about this, and uh, that young man um, was so angry when he heard that his friend was going to be deported that he decided to send this question. He did, so I'd like your response first. So the first thing I'd like to say to Ethan is thank you so much for um, standing up and having a voice. And this is an example of leadership of young people on issues that they care about. Disability and the stigma attached to disability is still rife across this community. Um, now, we hope that that's going to change with the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The question that Ethan asked was, what does this mean for this little boy who's going to be deported? Now, I am the mum of three children, as I've just said. Angus, my eldest, has both Down syndrome, he was born with it, and he lives with autism. He is non-verbal. He communicates with sign language and he communicates with an iPad. But he gives back to the community because it is about, to the original point, acceptance of diversity, supporting those who are vulnerable, and supporting families to look after the people that they care about. Now, to send this little boy back to a country that he doesn't know without the support network around We should him. explain, um, his mother is a nurse a from nurse. the Philippines. She's, She's been in the country in for Australia. eight years on a skilled working visa. Skilled working visa. Um, until it was discovered her son a had autism. Service. She was people were happy to have her stay in the country. Now the immigration department knows she's got autism. Um, they're being deported because he might be a burden on the health system here. That's the argument. That's the argument. Could, could, could I just... I mean, that's, it sounds an, a, a terrible situation. Well, it I sounds just, horrifying. It is. Yeah, yeah. No, but just it's let me... From my experience, though. that year I had multicultural affairs. I also had responsibility for um, these sorts of issues, right? So the... the Department has got a set of rules um, so that if someone comes in to Australia and you know they, they, they bring someone with them and if they're looking for so, so that the you know that uh, they're not taking advantage and I'm saying this woman did it all right but this but, has got to sit outside no, 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 of those rules. No, well, no, I'm just saying it does. It's, it's no, got well, to hang be on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Jane, hang on, hang on, hang on, Jane, hang on. It, I agree with the rules. Hey, but can I just make so, one point? No, no, the, the rule, can I, there is a, a fundamental point here, and that is the rules uh, no, can be overridden by the discretionary well, power of a minister. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Let me finish, please, Tony. Yeah. The thing is, the department has these rules. It doesn't allow that situation to continue. They have to deport them. The tribunal, the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, has the same rules, right? Therefore, this thing can go, and I had many of these instances. There's not one which I didn't allow um, the, the young person with whatever disability to stay in the country. But it goes to ministerial discretion. The minister has the discretion. Has the discretion to do, to and, do and this. He's, and the ministers over the years, there was a, a, a very similar case of a doctor who came in similar visa. Child had Downs went and had public outcry, and the minister used the discretion. The minister has the discretionary powers to do it, but it's not easy. And we've signed the UN Human Rights Convention for the Child that says we should also look after children with disabilities. So there are many people advocating in this space that we need to change our basic rules. And it is difficult. Um, you know, a lot of people want to come here. Um, a lot of people do come here. So you do have to have rules, but the minister does have the discretion. And hopefully, Ethan's case, um, they can get to their locus. Um, they can get to their local member and can see what... No, no truly, true. that's okay. what we're here for. <laughs> Members of Parliament are actually here to actually hear cases and... Uh, to actually hear cases and, and see if we can advocate. Uh, I think it's a remarkable thing. We've got an 11-year-old boy in Darwin who used to be in daycare with this boy whose name is Tyrone. And he's, he's made this um, appeal to the public. Now, Darren Hinch, you'd appreciate that. Oh, very much so. Very much so. What should happen next? Well, it'll go to the AAT, the AAT yes. I presume, yes. um, and if, it, if it's an adverse decision there, which can happen, um, 
then, the, as you say, the minister then could step That's in right. and say, no, I'm going to overrule it and let him stay. There will be a happy ending on this one, won't there we? There will be. I, mean, it, like, it, I, it, I, it I never knock back Imagine one if it wasn't this happening. Yeah. If, if it wasn't made a public case, yes. it would just... And, sh and, and, and there, there are, there no, no, are cases, not true. There are cases not, sadly, there well, are some, cases where there aren't happy endings. Let's that's be honest true. about that. There are. There might be, but there's a lot of cases... Andrew, are you saying... Can I just clear this up? Are you saying that you would recommend to the minister that he actually looks at this case very carefully and use his discretionary... Absolutely. As I said, in 12 months, I had quite a lot of these cases. Most of them never got publicity. I agreed with Anna. There could be some who don't ask anybody any questions and, and find themselves uh, deported. But, and that would be very sad. So there may be changes. There may be a case to change the rules. So if this sort of case comes up, it goes automatically. But, but I'm not sure. Um, I mean, there are reasons for the rules. And there's reasons for the discretion, the obvious reasons. And, I think every, I think every minister on either side of the house would uh, would make the right decision. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Tony. I've, I've attacked the AAT, the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, many times because it's let rapists and murderers stay in this country, and I've gone after them and had a couple of them deported. But on this occasion, I, I'd, I'd support you. Jane, mm. um, we're running out of time. In fact, we're over time. I think so. We're going to have to finish off there. So I'll give the last word to you. I imagine um, young Ethan, if he's actually up watching the show, and I'm told he does watch the show, um, be giving himself a bit of a high five with his mum right oh, now. I think he should be absolutely giving himself a massive <laughs> high five. It's an example of a young person taking action and if the minister does allow this family to stay, there could not be a happier end to it. It's fabulous.